Hello, hello everybody, it's Girl.Game, and welcome back to another Gander video. Today, I am checking out Aria's Choice by JJ Beats. JJ Beats uh, reached out to me actually over a month ago, but uh, Twitter is bad about <laughs> letting me know when I receive messages. Anyway, I eventually got their message, and they were asking me if I would mind checking out their first visual novel that they were doing for the Atomi Jam. And so they have a demo already, and I finally f found time to go and check it out. So the story for Aria's Choice is it's a visual novel filled with laughter and heart. We step into the shoes of Aria, a 21-year-old psychology student who is on an ambitious quest to understand complexities of human emotions and especially love. Aria's journey starts with the question, why does romantic love elude her, while on the other hand everyone around her seems coupled up? So there you go. There's our intro to this game. And the art looks really cute. I like the menu music already. So yeah, let's begin and see where this takes us. Very pretty. I like the kind of watercolor painting style backgrounds. It was just another typical day of studying on campus. I sat on a bench under a sprawling tree, my psychology textbook open in my lap. The topic at hand? The Triangle Theory of, of Love. So according to Triangle Theory of Love, love is made of three components, intimacy, passion, and commitment. As I glanced up from my book, a group of giggling girls walked by, distracting me. Why is she talking to herself? She looks like weirdo. <laughs> I ignored the comments, like I care what they think. Despite being a psychology major, relationships and social interactions still feel still felt like a complete mystery at times. I wanted to understand what makes people tick, but after getting into this academic course, it feels more complex rather than easy. Relationships sure are complicated, huh? The more I study them, the less I actually understand them in the real world. I saw a well-dressed man approaching the girls. The girls were visibly excited to see him. Suddenly, an unexpected voice broke my reverie. They talked to him as if he was some kind of a celebrity, but I couldn't make out who he was. His footsteps began to turn towards my direction after they had their little chat. I was skeptical of his approach. What did he want from me? Or is it just that he wants to sit here beside the park bench? Questions raced in my mind. He slowly comes near me, and then... Oh, hi, Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> Sorry, you look so much like a tuxedo mask. I'm like, whoa, hello. Is the seat taken? I saw him bending over to look more straight into my eyes, waiting for my response. No. It's not taken. I believe you are Aria, right? Well, you have me at a disadvantage, my good sir. Aw, oh, her smile's so cute. Yes, Arya Hartfeld. Or, hmm, Hartfield, I guess. Yes, Arya Hartfield. Have we met before? He smiled and pointed to my notebook, on which my name was written in intricate letter art. Ah. Oh, right. Duh. And you are? Oh, he's got his own little sprite. Damien. Damien Blackwood. It's my pleasure to meet you. He gestured towards me to shake his hand. I'd heard all about him. Rumors swirled about his connections with high-profile figures and his involvement in various past events related to government work. Oh, I recognize you now. Do you study psychology too? Certainly. Oh my. Well, if that's not love, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hello, hello. We shook hands in a platonic manner. Yes. He scanned me from head to toe as if I were a new specimen for his scientific experiment. I don't know. I know you guys are both like, I don't understand love, but if you're seeing like roses and hearts and sparkles and stuff, mm-mm. I straightened my skirt and stood up a little straighter. Psychology fascinates me. The human mind and all its intricacies. It's one of my courses this semester. Aria. 
It's nice to meet a fellow student, even if we approach psychology from slightly different angles. He then looks intently in my eyes. Um, ask him about the triangle theory of love and walk with him. Or say you need to go to the library and refer books on triangle theory of love. Okay, so I could either like, I assume this is continue with him or be like, bye. <laughs> okay, let's stick with this guy for now and see where it takes us. My curiosity peaked. I decided to strike up a conversation with Damien. I adjusted my bag strap and took a step closer. Now wait a minute, how would you know if we approach it from different angles or not? We've only just met. His mouth curved into a handsome smirk. Well now, I suppose that's true. Very well, let's discuss. Where should we begin? Well, right now in my psychology class, we're studying the triangle theory of love. Admittedly, I'm still grappling with what I think of it. What's your take on it? Ah, the triangle theory. His voice was silky smooth, as if he were musing over the theory over a bottle of red wine by the fireplace rather than standing in the middle of a busy campus. It's an intriguing concept. You see, love isn't a monolithic emotion. It's multifaceted, like a prism refracting light into different colors. You have to study this topic, too, in your psychology class as well? Not exactly. I tend to follow my curiosity and get too invested in my books when it comes to study, so I know about it. So these three components, intimacy, passion, and commitment, how do they fit together? Well... Yes? Oh. If love is a triangle, then those components are the corners. Nice save. Intimacy is the emotional closeness, the deep conversations, shared secrets, and vulnerability. Passion is the fire, the desire, the chemistry that ignites. And commitment. It's the decision to stay, the long-term investment. But can't love exist without all three? His smile widened. Absolutely. Some relationships are high on passion but lack commitment. Others are built on deep friendship but lack the fiery passion. The ideal, though, is a balanced triangle. A love that combines all three harmoniously. As we walked together across the campus, I found myself drawn to Damien's insights. His mysterious aura intrigued me. And what about you personally? Oh, a little bit of a blush. How do you perceive love? I suppose it's something like a complex equation. Variables change, and sometimes the solution surprises us. But one thing's certain. Understanding the components helps us navigate this enigma. I took a moment to process what he had said, gazing at the sunlight filtering through the leaves overhead. I had no practical experience in love, so the only thing I could offer was insight on the theory as an outsider. Well, I did have a relationship in the past, but that was... What was it? He just confessed to me and had ulterior motives. Uh-oh. It was never a real love. On the other hand, Damien had given such thoughtful answers, and it would have been rude to let the conversation end there. Maybe... We're all just trying to solve our own love equations. I returned my gaze to him once more and saw him watching me intently. There was a tightness in my chest I didn't quite understand when he spoke. Perhaps that's true. Sometimes, unexpected variables make it all the more fascinating. As we continued our stroll across campus, my curiosity about the enigma- Oh, hello, music. The enigma of Damien Blackwood and his perspectives on love only grew stronger. Okay, hold on a second. I need to turn the music down a little bit, actually. That's a little bit too loud now. There we go. Lovely. 
So, Damien, if love is such a complex equation, do you have the solution all figured out? The corners of his mouth turned up in a mysterious smile. Not at all. Love, like any great mystery, is meant to be explored, not solved. I nodded, mulling over his words. I suppose that's true. There's always more to discover, isn't there? Precisely. The journey is often more rewarding than the destination. He paused, his gaze settling on me. Speaking of which, I have a proposition for you. I felt my heartbeat quicken, unsure of what to expect. A proposition? Yes. I've noticed your keen interest in psychology, and I find your perspective refreshing. Are you about to ask me to date you as a psychology experiment? <laughs> How would you feel about meeting me for coffee sometime? I'd be delighted to discuss the intricacies of love and human behavior in greater depth. A flutter of nervousness and excitement stirred within me. Coffee? Uh, well... I assure you, it would be purely academic. I'm simply intrigued by your insights and would enjoy the chance to exchange ideas. Biting my lip, I considered his proposal. On one hand, the idea of spending more time with this refreshingly mysterious man may have been thrilling, but it also intimidated me. On the other hand, the opportunity to delve deeper into the psychology of love was too tempting to pass up. I mean, you, you gotta go. You, you have to delve deeper into the psychology of love. You gotta. I... I'd be happy to. Damien's eyes crinkled with a subtle smile. Excellent. How about tomorrow evening? There's a charming little cafe near campus that I frequent. Tomorrow evening it is. I felt my heart flutter in anticipation. As we parted ways, I couldn't help but wonder what this unexpected meeting would hold. Was Damien truly interested in an academic discussion? Or was there something more beneath the surface? Oh. I didn't think we'd actually make it to the next evening. Cool. The next evening, I made my way towards the cozy cafe Damien had mentioned. It is very cozy. As I approached the entrance, I stopped to smooth any wrinkles out of my shirt. I took a deep breath and opened the door. At first, I didn't see him. Was he late, or had he decided not to come after all? Just as I started to feel myself deflate, I spotted him at a small table near the back, sipping a steaming cup of coffee. I collected myself once more and slid into the chair across from him. Aria, you made it. I'm so glad you could join me. It sure is hard to keep casual when your stomach's all full of butterflies. Girl, I know. Ahem. <clears throat> I cleared my throat and began again. I'm excited to continue our discussion on the psychology of love. His eyes sparkled with genuine interest. Excellent. Can I get you a coffee? Or perhaps something else? Coffee would be wonderful, thank you. Oh, my lovely couple. Oh, we're not... You know who you remind me of. Um, is it Arya saying that? Me and my boyfriend! Well... To my horror and disgust, a single tear rolled down her cheek. I can't deal with other people's feelings, least of all complete strangers. Maybe it was supposed to be the waitress that was like, you remind me of me and my boyfriend? Maybe? But I knew the polite thing to do was to smile through it and wait until it's over, so waiting is which I did. Or what I did. Okay, it must have been the waitress then. Me and my ex-boyfriend, I guess. He said that he wanted to talk, so I thought we were going to take it to the next level. You know. She leaned in close. Holding hands. But in the end, he was leaving me for my older sister. Ugh. <laughs> Just like the last one. What? And the one before that. I I'm confused. 
Have you had boyfriends all leave you for your one older sister, or do you have multiple older sisters, and each time you get a boyfriend, they leave you for your older sister? Ugh. Either way, I'm sorry? Damien cleared his throat impatiently. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, darling. She wiped away her tears with her apron. What can I get you? She'll have a coffee. With cream, please. She let out a sad little squeak. Oh, Alex used to love cream. She left for a moment. You deserve better than Alex if he left you for your sister. When she returned with our drinks, the tears were really flowing. Thankfully, she left us out of it this time. Well, that escalated. Damien focused his attention on me as I poured the creamer into my coffee until it was the perfect shade of beige. I feel as if I've been doing all the talking on the subject at hand. Tell me, Aria, what are your thoughts on the practical application of the triangle theory of love? How can we use this framework to better understand our own relationships? I took a sip of the rich aromatic coffee, savoring the flavor as I gathered my thoughts. Well, I think the theory provides a useful starting point. But ultimately, love is so much more complex than a simple triangle. The components of intimacy, passion, and commitment can ebb and flow over time, and the balance between them is unique to each relationship, right? Damien nodded thoughtfully, his gaze never leaving mine. I felt a little heat run up the back of my neck. Did he see right through me? Did he know my understanding of practical application was exclusively secondhand? The paw stretched out just a moment too long. I breathed a small sigh of relief when he spoke again. Fascinating. And how do you believe one can cultivate a healthy, balanced love? I thought a moment longer, determined to give a satisfying answer. I suppose it requires constant communication, understanding, and a willingness to adapt as the relationship evolves. Love isn't static. It's a living, breathing thing that needs to be nurtured. I was surprised to find that in spite of my inexperience, I felt extremely confident in my answer. Well said. You have a remarkable insight into the intricacies of the human heart. Evidently, that confidence had been well-placed. Ayy. I'm still learning, to be honest. There's so much more to discover. Indeed. He leaned back in his chair, that mysterious smirk of his spreading across his face once more. What is it with you and the smirk? That's part of the thrill, don't you think? The endless possibilities, the surprises that await us on the journey of love. As we continued our captivating conversation, I found myself drawn deeper into Damien's world. His keen intellect and thoughtful perspectives challenged me, sparking a curiosity I hadn't expected. And beneath the surface, I sensed a vulnerability, a longing for connection that belied his enigmatic facade. Time seemed to slow as we explored the complexities of the human heart, our coffee growing cold and forgotten. In that moment, the world melted away, leaving only Damien and me, two souls united by a shared fascination with the mysteries of love. As the evening wore on, our conversation flowed effortlessly, each revelation and insight drawing us closer. I found myself captivated by Damien's depth of understanding and the way he could articulate the nuances of love and human behavior. You know, the more we delve into the psychology of relationships, the more we realize how much is left to uncover. There are so many variables at play. Societal expectations, personal histories, subconscious needs and desires. Absolutely. And what works for one couple may not work for another. Love is truly a unique journey for each individual. Precisely. And that's what makes it all the more fascinating, don't you think? The unpredictability, the constant evolution. It's like solving a puzzle with ever-changing pieces. I couldn't help but be drawn in by his passion, the way he spoke about love with such reverence. So, how do you navigate the complexities of love in your own life, Damien? 
It sounded too bold once I'd said it out loud. There was no backing down now. Gotta go all in. His expression shifted, a flicker of vulnerability crossing his features before he caught himself and settled back into his usual facade. Oh, well, I suppose you could say... My own love life has been... Second priority. It's hard to balance my line of work and schooling, so adding a relationship on top of it is... He trailed off, staring over my shoulder as if watching someone. Is... something the matter? He shook his head quickly. Apologies. I thought I saw someone I knew. Ooh, okay, interesting. At any rate, what I mean to say is I'm still on my own journey of discovery. Love has a way of surprising us, even when we think we have it all figured out. There was a weighted pause, and I sensed there was more to his story, a depth of emotion he was carefully concealing. Reaching across the table, I lightly brushed my fingers against his. Dang, girl! I understand. Sometimes the heart's path is not an easy one to follow. Damien's gaze dropped to our hands, a slight tension in his shoulders. For a moment, the air between us crackled with unspoken words. Indeed. But perhaps with the right companion, the journey becomes a little less daunting. He looked at me again, carefully monitoring my reaction. My heart quickened, a flutter of hope blossoming in my chest. The room seemed to close in, the walls pressing against my ribs. I wanted to lean closer, to bridge the gap between us, but the weight of our histories held me back. Before I could respond, however, his phone suddenly chirped, shattering the intimate moment. Damien's expression tightened, and he withdrew his hand from mine, as if the connection had become too dangerous. The tension hung in the air, thick and suffocating, like a storm brewing on the horizon. I glanced at the phone, its screen illuminating his face. Who could be interrupting us now? Was it a lover, a business associate, or someone else entirely? Nosy nosy. The possibilities raced through my mind, each one adding another layer of complexity to our fragile dance. My heart was rioting in my chest. He was very still for a moment, his jaw clenched. He sighed heavily and stood. <sighs> Forgive me, Aria, but I'm afraid I must cut our evening short. An urgent matter has arisen that requires my attention. Disappointment washed over me, but I did my best to mask it with a polite smile. Of course, no need to apologize. Thank you for the engaging conversation. As Damien rose from his seat, a flicker of hesitation crossed his face. He met my gaze, a hint of longing lingering in his eyes before he quickly looked away. The pleasure was all mine. I'll be seeing you. In spite of the seeming urgency of the call, he lingered by the table. Aria. He paused, his hand hovering near mine for a beat too long. Then, with a visible effort, he curved his movement, his fingertips brushing not against my hand, but a scant inch away on the table. Smooth. A flicker of hope sparked in my eyes as I unconsciously shifted my hand a touch closer, yearning for the contact he seemed to hesitate over. <laughs> the phone's like, no, get out, it's too soon, you're going too fast, hold on, think about it. However, the insistent buzz of his phone shattered the fragile connection. His expression hardened with a jolt. Uh, keep studying hard, okay? He snatched the phone and hurried away, leaving me staring after him, my hand suspended in midair, the warmth of the near touch replaced by a chilling sense of loss. Damien is not the right person for me. If he was, if he was, he would have stayed and not left me so awkwardly. Oof. Why did Damien leave me like that? Was it really an urgent business, or was it an excuse for something he is not willing to open up to yet? I mean, I don't think you should write somebody off for, like, getting an urgent text message and having to go, and not expanding on it when you've known them for literally a day? Half a day? <laughs> So, we'll, we'll go with this one. The next day, I found myself unable to shake the memory of our interrupted evening. 
It had been unlike any other conversation I'd ever had before, and the weight of the unspoken words between us seemed to linger in the air, like a phantom presence that I couldn't quite escape. Even at college classes, my mind kept drifting back to him, wondering what could have been so important that it required his immediate attention. My thoughts were interrupted by the professor drifting back to the topic of attachment theory. Hello, professor. Now, let's discuss the different attachment types. There are four main types. Secure, anxious, preoccupied, dismissive avoidant, and fearful avoidant. Does anyone know which type they are? <laughs> wow! Some student. Your mom is my type. Jeffrey, your dad is my type, and yet he somehow still raised an incredibly disappointing son. Hey, you can't say that to a student! I have 20 years of tenure. Try me. The boy settled back in his seat, grumbling something unflattering about our instructor that I dare not repeat. Get it, Professor. Let's try another question. Can anyone tell me whether it remains completely fixed after early childhood, or do significant life experiences influence it to change over time? With almost maddening predictability, my mind drifted once again to Damien. Despite his dismissive behavior, there had been an undemi undeniable spark between us. Could it be possible that our attachment styles weren't as fixed as we thought? That perhaps, given the right circumstances, even someone as guarded as Damien could form a secure attachment? My hand shot up, and I waited impatiently for the professor to acknowledge me. When she finally did, I took a deep breath before voicing my thoughts. I do think it's possible for attachment styles to change over time. With new experiences and relationships, we might learn to adapt and form more secure attachments, even if our early childhood experiences were less than ideal. Anyone can change if they want to. Her eyebrows raised an in interest, and she nodded in agreement. That's a very astute observation, Aria. And a correct one. Research has shown that about 30% of people do develop different attachment styles over time. My chest swelled with pride at her acknowledgement of my insight. It was as if she had read my mind, sensing the hope that lay beneath my questions. I couldn't help but wonder if Damien's dismissive behavior was a result of his own past experiences, or if there was something deeper at play. The professor leaned forward, her gaze sweeping over the class with a thoughtful intensity. Let's delve deeper. She tapped the whiteboard with a marker. Consider how positive and negative influences can affect an individual's attachment style. Positive influences, such as supportive relationships and therapy, can foster a shift towards a more secure attachment style. Conversely, negative experiences, like trauma or loss, might reinforce insecure attachment patterns, or even cause a regression to less adaptive styles. The room was silent, every student hanging on her words. Even Jeffrey seemed to sit up in his seat a little. Suddenly, her eyes locked onto mine. She addressed me directly. So then, Arya, how do you think these influences might manifest in someone with dismissive tendencies? What kind of positive or negative experiences could alter his attachment style? I felt a rush of adrenaline as all eyes turned to me. I had no idea how, but she seemed to have reached through my chest and gripped my heart, understood the journey it had been on recently. This was more than a theoretical question. It was a window into understanding Damien's guarded heart. There was a flutter in my chest that made it hard to keep my voice steady, but I did my best. Well, if that person experienced consistent and genuine care from someone who respected his boundaries, it could gradually help him feel safe enough to explore a more secure attachment. Right? It's certainly possible. What do you think might prevent that kind of change from taking place? I guess if he, uh, or she, were to face betrayal or abandonment, it might reinforce their belief that relying on others is a weakness, causing them to retreat further into his shell. The professor nodded, a small smile playing on her lips. 
Very well said, Arya. The journey towards a secure attachment is complex and deeply personal. It's a dance between the past and the present, between fear and hope. As the lecture drew to a close, I couldn't help but feel a newfound determination. I wanted to be a positive influence in Damien's life, to show him that not all bonds are chains, and that together we could navigate the intricate steps of this dance. All day long, I replayed the professor's lecture in my head. The prospect of changing Damien's attachment type plagued my mind. For so long, I had fixated on the mere theory of what we'd been studying, but suddenly I was intent on putting it into practice in order to better others. Especially others that were as intriguing and deserving as Damien. Mm-hmm. Hello? Buenos dias, baby girl! The voice that interrupted me was so cheerful that I knew it could only be my best friend, Serenity. We had our next class together. Oh, hey, you look lovely. Where have you been lately, Miha? I haven't seen you in days. You weren't avoiding me, were you? I wasn't, not this time anyway. I met this guy. Oh, so you found a boyfriend? I thought I'd have one first, but you seem to have lapped me in this department. He's just very knowledgeable about psychology, so he's interesting to talk to. I just really want to figure him out. Sure, okay. Well, what's this mystery man's name? Damien. Damien? Like, THE Damien? Ostio tia, not only do you have a boyfriend, but he's one of the coolest guys on campus. She put her hand on my shoulder. I picked it up as if it were a small dead animal and dropped it back by her side. Rude. Damien isn't my boyfriend. We just happened to get coffee, talk for hours on end, and explore each other's perspectives about love. Right. But he's totally not your boyfriend. He's not! Whatever you say. Kuso, run! Legs pumping, breath shortening, we sprinted the final stretch to the classroom. We stumbled through the classroom door, huffing and puffing, just as the professor was beginning her lecture. Serenity gave him a pained smile. She sighed and gestured for us to take a seat. Wait, him? Her? <laughs> it was like... She hadn't started her thing, but we gave him a pain smile, but she sighed. I'm so confused. During class, Serenity kept giving a menacing stare at one of our classmates, Silver. Just go talk to him. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I want to talk to that numbskull? He thinks he's so cool because he's so rich and so good looking. <laughs> you want me to get his attention for you? Oh, Silver! He didn't notice me at all! Yahoo! Determined to get his attention, I reached out and tapped on his shoulder. The class was buzzing with students chattering. Certainly my voice didn't go through. The professor just finished lecturing about social dynamics, so I decided to poke Silver and discuss that. I tap on Silver's shoulder. Hey, Silver! What do you think about the professor's point on group behavior? Wow, hello you. You look like a dang and rompa character. You're so cool looking. <laughs> the class goes silent. Silver turns slightly irritated but curious. He's like, Whoa. It's interesting. I think there is more to it than just conformity. Yes, a little bit of boasting about your money is essential in any group, isn't it? Oh, a little. Why don't we go all the way? Silver reaches underneath his gold-plated seat and opens a locked strongbook box using his fingerprint. Excuse me? The world is my oyster! I shall do with it as I please! If boasting is such a bad thing, I guess no one would care to pick up this fat stack of cash. Who are you? <laughs> Silver throws the money pulled from the strong box in the air and steps back so he can see the response. Suddenly. 
Please keep posting! I need money for the next sexy K-Boys album! Move, fish! I'm moving to Miami to get with the thick chicks for life! Big Bootylicious for the win! <laughs> ah, yeah, Big Bootylicious. The first student hits the second. Ah, not in the gumdrop buttons! Deserved. So, Silver and Serenity, you two have such, uh, dynamic discussions. It's like watching some debate team in action. That's one way of putting it. If by dynamic you mean Silver always boasting about his money, then sure. I don't boast. I say what it is. It's not my fault that I have a good amount of money. I admire the conviction, but not when it's disguised for narrow-mindedness. Okay, okay, let's not turn it into a sparring match. We are all here friends, right? I notice Silver and Serenity exchanging their looks and their expressions softening. Right. Yes, friends. Great, because friends should definitely grab a coffee together. My treat. It's time for lunch already anyways. Let's meet at Restaurant Reverie. It's my treat. We could dine there and discuss further on the subject. I will be saint only if Silver doesn't start with his egotistical rants. It's settled then. Lunch at Reverie with some psychology discussions. Silver, Serenity, and I then took Silver's limo to go to the fancy restaurant he mentioned. Okay. Whoa, you weren't kidding about it being fancy. I thought we were just going for coffee, my goodness. We arrived at a high-end restaurant called Reverie. It had soft lighting and elegant decor. We got seated at the table. It had fine china with crystal glasses. There was a visible sense of awkwardness between us, since Serenity and I were not used to such fancy restaurants. I tried to break the ice. So... This place is fancy. I was thinking more of a casual cafe vibe. I thought we could use the change of scenery. Plus, the food here is excellent. Can't argue with that. Oh, he is just showing off his money as usual again. Huh. If I was showing off, I would have told you about the time I came here with the now famous indie singer, Hannah, the Trials of the Rebellious. Hannah? Hannah the Oven Rising Star? No way! Shall I give her a call? Do you need proof? Prove it! Silver whips out his phone and puts it on speaker. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is ridiculous. He hello? Hello, Hannah. How are you doing on this stellar evening? Oh, Silver! Howdy! I'm doing just peachy. How was y'all say? Oh, fantastic. I'm just here with a small fan who likes to sing and happens to like your music a lot. Oh. Oh. Oh my golly goodness. It's... <laughs> it's Hannah! Eee! I can't believe it! Hannah, you're so awesome! Keep up the hard work! Aww, thank you for your support. I couldn't get anywhere without my fans. Sterling Enterprise really helped me kick off my career. I mainly have you to thank, Silver. I will never forget what you have done for me. I'll keep trying my best. It was not a problem for me in the slightest. Just keep those numbers up and we should be smooth sailing. Okie dokie. Oh my, sorry Silver, I gotta go. Serenity, was it? Keep on trucking with your singing. I'm wishing you the best. Ciao for now. Oh, thank you. Uh, bye bye Farewell for now, Hannah. Silver hangs up the phone. Oh, oh my goodness! I can't believe I got to speak with Hannah! Silver says smugly. You're welcome. Sh shut up! But, thank you, Silver. Hmm, not a problem, girly. Much appreciated, girly. <laughs> well, that went well. 
so tell me about Sterling Enterprise. What's it like running your own company? He begins passionately. It's challenging, but rewarding. Social psychology isn't just academic for me. It's practical. Understanding people's motivations, group dynamics is crucial for management. Just then, the waiter comes in and gives us the menu. We took a while to read. Good afternoon, are you ready to order? Yes, we are taking a look. Of course, take your time. Serenity flips through the pages of the menu fast, scanning everything. Wow, this menu is huge! Silver smirks. <laughs> I know, right? So many options. Serenity then points me to something to look at the menu. Look at this! Deconstructed salad! It sounds interesting. Ooh, it has quinoa, avocado, and grilled chicken. That does sound healthy. Exactly! I'm trying to be more mindful of what I eat these days. Silver looks at Serenity teasingly. Oh no, is the health nut taking over? Hey, it's not about being a health nut. It's about making good choices for my body. Silver raises an eyebrow. Okay, okay, I get it. So, what are you going to order, Miss Healthy? Hmm, maybe the salmon with roasted vegetables. It sounds light and flavorful. I think I'll try the lentil soup and a side salad. I am not going to waste time. Time is money, after all. First item of every category, please, and make it snappy. One of everything? Dang! You all got a bunch of tapeworms or something. I better get a good tip. I mean, one of everything, sure. Uh, no problem. The waiter calls the chef out. Yo! Chef! They said they want one of everything! You better bring out Bobby the Bouncer to make sure they don't dine and dash. Also, don't forget to add the 25% gratuity fee. Silver whips out a stack of money from his pocket and slams them into the table to show he is not bluffing. Then he takes out a lot of credit cards on the table as well as if they were a deck of playing cards. How the rest of the food which we don't take for the stuff? The waiter got shocked. His eyes went wide and his jaw dropped. He then got his composure again and went back to the kitchen. I could hear faint exclamations of voices. Bro, they are serious. One guy filthy rich and he just... Then the voices fade away from the chatter of other guests at the restaurant talking about who this rich guy is. Yeah, sure, rich guy. Just order everything on the menu. To each his own, right? I then turn to Silver, trying to bring back on the topic we were discussing. It's fascinating that you were using social psychology for practical purposes as well. You know, I've always been focused on the why behind actions. It's what drives my business decisions. And here I thought you were just another stoic businessman. But you're actually a thinker. And you, Aria, are full of surprises. Your spontaneity is... refreshing. I learned that from Serenity. You know, life is too short for theories and hypotheses. Sometimes you have to live in the moment. I looked at Serenity. She intuitively checks her watch, to which I saw her face turn to an expression of pale anxiety for a moment. Oh no! I have a special live stream planned for my audience! You're a streamer too, go get it, girl! I totally forgot! I have to leave, guys! I will make it up to you, Arya! Have to go! See you! Well... I thought I was the third wheel on this date, but now it's... <laughs> third wheel in this guy. And, uh, just like that, Serenity disappears from our sights, probably taking Silver's limo with her, okay? Well, nothing to it but to do it. So, tell me more about Sterling Enterprises. I asked, trying to steer the com uh, conversation back to where it was before Serenity's abrupt departure. Silver leaned back in his chair with a hint of amusement between his eyes. It's a constant learning curve, that's for sure. But seeing the company grow and thrive, knowing that I have played a part in it, is incredibly rewarding. He then admits... It's more than a job. 
It is about understanding people and what motivates them, how they interact. Social psychology isn't just an academic pursuit for me. It's the foundation of everything I do. He pauses, then a playful grin appears. And you know, sometimes it helps me predict exactly what someone is thinking. I raised my eyebrow. I was definitely intrigued by now. Oh, really? Like what? He chuckles and leans closer. <laughs> For example, I can tell that you are dying to try that chocolate souffle on the dessert menu. My cheeks flush slightly. <laughs> Guilty as charged, I admitted with a laugh. Let's then indulge. He then gestures to the waiter. Bring us souffle and anything that catches your eye. The rest of the afternoon was filled with lively conversation interspersed with moments of comfortable silence. We discussed everything from current events to childhood dreams, discovering common grounds along the way. Who would have known? As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow over the restaurant, Silver surprises me again. I know you are wondering about Serenity. His voice was soft. She is a good person with a big heart, but she can be... Impulsive at times. I can see that. I nodded understandingly. But she also has a lot of energy and passion. It's one of the things I admire about her. Silver smiled. Yes, she does. And she is lucky to have you as a friend. I agreed. And I am lucky to have her. Even if she has the tendency to disappear in the, a cloud of dust. We shared a laugh, the unspoken understanding hanging between us. As we left the restaurant, I couldn't help but feel a warmth spread through me. It had been an unexpected afternoon, filled with laughter, good food, and surprisingly meaningful conversation. And while Serenity's abrupt exit was a bit jarring, it hadn't overshadowed the positive connection I felt with Silver. The next day, I had no morning classes in the university, so I went to the library to study with Serenity. The library was quiet with soft rustling of pages. I was sitting at a table which was laden with books. <sighs> you know, there is just... something about Silver that just captivates me. Oh, well, <laughs> goodbye uh, Damien, I guess. <laughs> that didn't take much. You mean... you want to date him? It's just that when he is around... I feel whirlwinds of emotions and get butterflies in my stomach, but I can't figure him out. That's the thrill of it, isn't it? The mystery. Exactly. But it is also so confusing. So what happened with your live stream you had yesterday? Oh, it went well. Speaking of live stream, you know about Ty? I shook my head. No, what about him? He has been helping me with his fitness routine. It's been... transformative. Just like his bum. <laughs> Man, am I a fan of cake. Girl. I thought you were on a diet, or at least cutting calories. <laughs> oh, Aria. So innocent. There's just some cakes, I can't deny. Hmm. But anyways. We did a live stream together following his fitness routine. Really? Isn't he the football lead of our university? I think I've seen him in the news. Yes, but his skills in football not only comes from practice, but rather a good fitness knowledge as well. He is actually quite a motivator. He pushes me to try new things, to be stronger, to feel better. It's been amazing. Just like his arms and thighs. I feel like one day he's going to be a muscle daddy and have huge daddy milkers. Serenity, please calm yourself, girl. I'm surprised you're talking like this. If a dude talked like this, wouldn't that be disgusting? Yes, because they talk to me just like that. Girl, I ain't oblivious. I know guys like to look at what I got now. Especially now that the unwanted fat went away, they were either looking at my face or somewhere else. Girl... Wow. Dang. I ain't going to just flaunt what I got, but I can still be proud of where I'm at physically and mentally. 
<laughs> Girl needs a tall glass of water or something. We continue to study, but the air is now filled with new energy of a mix of anticipation and admiration. I thought for a while, then said... Maybe it's not about figuring everything out. Serenity nods. Maybe it's about enjoying the journey. I share a knowing look, a silent agreement of shared experiences and unspoken understandings. I was completely engrossed in studies with Serenity by my side. The library was quiet, only the soft rustle of turning pages breaking the silence. In the distance, we heard some faint footsteps coming. Suddenly, the door swung open. I saw Silver, and from what I recognized, the other person with him was Ethan Nakamura, the university's coding prodigy. Silver spotted us, his face confident as ever, with a friendly smile. Hey, Arya and Serenity. Just finished my class. Momentarily breaking my concentration, I ask... Hi, Silver. Was it a good class? His eyes gleam with passion. Yes, it was pretty interesting. We were taught how AI can benefit the business and how it can be used to leverage profit. Bring Daddy the money! You guys are way too loud in this library. Serenity was fascinated by hearing this, so she perked up at his words. Oh, cool! I am fascinated by AI. It's booming all over social media. Ethan nods, clearly excited to see everyone interested. Oh, well, hello, Ethan. I really like your look. Me too. I think it has the potential to revolutionize many industries. I had a class of AI algorithms, and to be honest, apart from training costs, the implementation is quite straightforward for the AI. Uh, Silver's playful smirk forms on his lips and says, Speaking of revolutions, I am thinking of incorporating AI into Sterling Enterprises. Ethan's eyes widen with interest. Really? That's fascinating. I would love to hear more about your ideas. Silver gestures us to sit down. Of course, I believe AI could be incredibly valuable in streamlining our operations, analyzing market trends, and even developing new products. The conversation quickly became animated, both Ethan and Silver bouncing ideas off each other. Serenity and I listened intently, occasionally interjecting with our own thoughts and, and questions. As they talked, Layla entered the library, searching for a book. She spotted Silver and approached our table. Oh, wow. That is an awesome looking tattoo. <laughs> Silver, how's my giant sugar daddy doing? Have a minute, I was looking for a marketing book. Any recommendations? Layla, I don't think you know what sugar daddy means. What are you talking about? You're always giving me some sugar. Oh my money, Layla. Please stop. Huh? Okie dokie, Daddy Warbucks! That comment aside... Ah, perfect timing. We are discussing the potential of AI in business. Layla's eyes widened with curiosity. AI in business? That sounds interesting. Silver introduced Ethan. This is Ethan, a coding prodigy. He has been helping me brainstorm some ideas for incorporating AI into Sterling Enterprises. Ethan and Layla exchanged greetings, a spark of mutual interest igniting between them. Okay. A coding prodigy, huh? I'm actually curious how AI is being used in gaming and other interactive experiences. Ethan gleams. Oh, that's another fascinating area. It's being used to create more immersive and realistic game worlds, as well as develop intelligent companions and opponents. Layla, captivated by his passion, leans in. Wow, that's amazing! I would love to hear more about it sometime. Silver, noticing the connection between them, suggested a way to continue the conversation. Why don't you join us for pool night at my mansion tonight? We can discuss AI, gaming, and anything else that interests you. Pool night? That sounds like fun. Can I bring Ty and Tanner? They'd love to hear about it too. Silver readily agrees. 
Of course! The more the merrier. We will have a great time. Yay! It's a threesome! Layla, please. I'll tell them to get ready. It's only just the three of us. I'm so excited to do more stuff with other people. <sighs> so true. The more the merrier sometimes. Y'all gotta stop talking. Please. I'll explain later. As the group dispersed, the library once again filled with quite a hum of activity. Silver then pulled me to the side. I was a bit taken aback, but continued with it anyways. Silver then whispers. I need to discuss something with you privately. Let's go to the park. But beneath the surface, a web of possibilities had begun to weave in my mind, feel by curiosity, shared interests, and potential of AI to transform the world. As one does. Silver and I strolled through the park, the gentle breeze carrying the sweet scent of blooming flowers. He seemed lost in thought, his brow furrowed slightly. You wanted to discuss something private? He nods, letting out a heavy sigh. Oh. <sighs> I have been thinking a lot about... us. Oh? About whether we should go on an actual date. My heart skips a beat. Okay, well, we just said bye, Damien. <laughs> wow, okay. I tried to keep my expression neutral, though I could feel the warmth rising to my cheeks. Oh? And what are your thoughts? I find myself wondering if you are truly interested in me, or just my wealth and status. I open my mouth to protest, but he raises a hand, stopping me. Hear me out. If we do pursue this, I want to know it's real. No extravagance, no over-the-top dates to impress you. Just us. You are right. Why don't we start simple? Maybe... karaoke night? A slow smile spread across his face. Karaoke it is. I low-key love that. The karaoke bar was lively, filled with sounds and amateur singers and clinking glasses. Silver and I snagged a small table near the stage, menus forgotten as we watched the performers. This was a great idea. I haven't been to karaoke in ages. Well, we can't let the night pass without giving it a try ourselves. He leans in conspiratorially. What do you say we do a duet? I grin, excitement bubbling up inside me. You are on. How about this song? The opening notes of familiar tunes begin to play and Silver's eyes light up with recognition. Yes. It's... special to me. We made our way to the stage, the lyrics flowing easily between us. As the song progressed, I noticed Silver's voice growing thick with emotion. When our eyes met, I saw raw vulnerability in his gaze that took my breath away. As the final notes faded, the room erupted in applause. But Silver seemed almost... shaken. I touched his arm gently. Are you okay? He blinked rapidly, nodding. I... yes. Let's step outside for a moment. The cool night air was a relief as we exited the karaoke bar. Silver leaned back against the wall, eyes closed. That song really means a lot to you, doesn't it? He was silent for a moment before finally meeting my gaze. It was my grandparents' favorite. They used to sing it to me all the time when I was little. After my mother passed away from cancer, they were the ones who raised me, who showed me unconditional love. That song, it reminds me of them. I felt my heart constrict at the raw pain in his words. Without thinking, I stepped forward and pulled him into a tight embrace. He stiffened for a moment before melting into me, his arms winding around my waist. I am so sorry, Silver. Thank you for sharing that with me. He held me for a long moment before finally releasing me, his eyes shining with unshed tears. You are one of the few people I've ever opened up to like this. 
he managed a small smile. There is still so much you don't know about me, about my life. But I find myself wanting you to know it all. I return his smile, feeling a profound sense of connection. I am here to listen whenever you are ready. As we turned to head back inside, I felt a sense of excitement mingled with trepidation. Because I knew, whatever came next, my life would never be the same. Okay. And that is right at the one hour mark. So I think I'm going to end there for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is very cute. It's just super, super sweet, super cute. <laughs> I do feel bad for Damien, though. I thought I felt like there was so much tension going on between him and Arya. And then she's like, and now I'm dating Silver. Damien who? <laughs> Uh, but other than that, Silver's pretty great. I like Silver. I like all of the cast. Um, let's see. So Silver you can date. Damien you can date, obviously. We met Ethan. Ethan is also someone you can date. Uh, Ty has been mentioned. We haven't met him yet, but he's also dateable. And then there's Michelangelo, who we haven't heard any mention of yet. So you got five uh, love interests. So yeah, anyway. This was a fun little demo. There's more to see, obviously, and other choices you could have made. So if you guys are interested in checking out the demo, I will have a link to it in the description below. You can check it out on Itch.io. And uh, otherwise, I will also have a link to JJ Beat's YouTube channel because they often post uh, video updates on there on how the game is progressing. So yeah, I encourage you to go check them out, give them some love, and I'm really enjoying this. So I hope you guys had a fun time joining me today. All right, until next time, I will see you later.